Um, dutifully muted, muted, uh, but now no longer. Um, yeah. So, so, so the 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 goal of um, two entities, and and here I'll just build build up momentum. One can think of what Eric and I are doing as a a long term project, which what one might call um, uh, Pompeii linked open data. That's just because PLOD, you know, whatever. That's that's what we go around around saying sometimes. PLOD. Um, there is also the, the Pompeii Artistic Landscape Project. The Pompeii Artistic Landscape Project is what um, the Getty Museum has given money to us as part of its digital art history. I think that's what it's called, or digitizing the ancient, or something like that. Um, um, uh, and, and, and we wrote a grant saying that, that we want to place um, art, wall paintings from Pompeii, the famous city, destroyed in now we know October of, uh, of, uh, of 79, no longer August of 79, small detail, that is not our focus. Um, uh, we want to be able to allow people to search across the site, to place, small, to place um, artworks in their urban context, because somewhat surprisingly, it is not possible to do that. There are feet and feet of, of, of books on shelves that do capture a tremendous amount of information, but it is not possible in a systematic fashion to say, to, to come up with a concise query in which you're reasonably confident with the results such that you as a human can then go on and say, I want to start thinking about Pompeii. We're not, we're not there yet. And of course, Eric and I haven't completely put us there, but I think today we want to show you where it is that we're, we're getting on the path towards being able to, um, to, to uh, the path towards being able to do that. And so Pompeii, Pompeii is interesting because, um, you know, there's this entity Pompeii. It is broken down into regions which are modern. Eric would already be showing you a map of Pompeii by right now, but I'm holding my hands in a, a shape like this big. And it is divided into regions and each one or this shape, whatever. It's not it's much bigger than this. Um, it's divided into regions and each of those regions are divided into insulae. Each of those insulae are divided into um, what are traditionally can be called your Pompeian houses. But of course, not all of them are houses houses. So Eric and I came up with a, we call them properties. And each one of those then is, is divided into, into rooms, but of course they're not all rooms. So we call them spaces. These are the kinds of arguments that, that somebody will, somebody may say, wait, but it works most of the time. And we're reasonably happy to be able to plow through those, those rooms. Um, Eric has a GIS file in which he has drawn lines for walls, and we as we call anything like that a feature. Now you're switching a world. On that feature, there is an artwork created. That artwork is divided into zones. That zones does things like depict Dionysus, and Dionysus has a crown. And so that crown, going back to what I said, is linked, linked to Pompeii. And imagine, um, uh, a, a linked open data set that takes all those small entities, whether it's Dionysus or whether it's the uh, mosaic on the floor. And mostly, a lot, not mostly, a lot of what it says is this thing is part of this thing, which is part of this thing, which is part of this thing, which is part of Pompeii. And let's bring that all together into a graph and be able to query it. And uh, we believe interesting things will start to happen on that basis. And today, if we can hint at that at all, giving you practice on how we're doing it and giving you a sense that, that, that not, somewhere between vaporware and you're confident we can do it. That's where I want people to, uh, to end up. To capture the moment of creation, make you think it's not vaporware, but of course, we're leaving a lot up to your imagination. Eric, how are you doing in terms of... Uh, um I'm good. I, I, I think the entirety of this delay was simply to hear us say you hear you say capture the moment of, of creation. Uh, that's quite a it's quite a burden for our presentation. But uh, now that I have done the low tech work of going to get a hard drive and saving the, the file onto that, uh, I think I think I am prepared to share a screen with you guys now. So uh, I want to start with something a little bit um, a little bit different um, in terms of this project. Rather than starting at the technology, I want to start with the the art, and not even really with what's in the art for the most part. I want to just start with a simple concept, which is that for the last fifty years, the Pompeian studies have been very different from the 250 years or 200 plus years that preceded them. In the last 
40 to 50 years, <coughs> excuse me, there's been largely a moratorium on digging into the areas that have been covered by Mount Vesuvius. And because of that, the generation of scholars that I grew up with and some, and to some degree, my, um, my, my mentors grew up and began working in a world in which the kinds of things you're seeing on your screen right now and, 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 and here um, weren't part of the daily discovery. They weren't part of what people thought of when they thought, go to work at Pompeii and you will find. But for the 250 years, um, well, again, I should say 200 years or so previous, those scholars on the, uh, on the regular basis would see the kinds of artworks that are now astounding the world uh, because of the conservation efforts that Pompeii is taking in order to, uh, to create uh, uh, some areas of buffer between uh, the unexcavated and the excavated areas. So we're getting finally a, uh, a glimpse at the kind of the, the, the fullness and the richness of Roman wall painting, uh, Roman arts uh, uh, and sculpture that hasn't been seen um, for a generation and a half, but for every preceding generation, and the five or six of those at least, um, that was exactly what they came to Pompeii to see. So if we'd had more of a um, more of a spatial turn or even more of a data turn, uh, part of that is also that the richness of the information that Pompeii has given for so long has not been forthcoming. And so now we have an opportunity to take this spatial data quantitative turn and reapply it to a new world of, of, of data that we hadn't been thinking about before, which is individual objects, individual representations painted on the wall. Um, I'm going to talk very, very briefly about two projects because we can't really talk about PALP without talking about the PBMP, the Pompeii Bibliography and Mapping Project, because it is the spatial background to um, the, the um, Pompeii Artistic Landscape Project. And so I'll be, I'll be just saying PALP from now on. So you'll, you'll just to save us all a little bit of ear, ear strain. Um, I also wanted to just point out that this project is based upon four major sets of works. Um, and these are huge cataloging efforts that took the better part of the second half of the 20th century to accomplish. Uh, on the far left, you see the Corpus Topographicum Pompeiana represented, which is uh, an incomplete set of kind of comprehensive mapping and uh, and, cart and cartographical, maybe kind of cartographic histori historiography. Um, with that, then comes the Nova Bibli uh, Bibliotheca Pompeiana, which uh, catalogs about 18,000 references to Pompeii. Uh, and then we have two other ones, which uh, Pompeii Paturi uh, Pavimenti and Pompeii Paturi uh, Mosaici. These two are not uh, going to be troubling us at this moment because we're first going to build up the world of, of uh, geography that we understand and to see how we're setting the table for establishing where the artworks uh, are. Um, so quickly on the PBMP, just to let you know that we have uh, a website and a web map that you can go and look at. And it's interesting because you can click on things and you can get some information this, to this audience. Uh, I do not need to say hardly anything about these things other than to say that we have a parallel Zotero group that captures most of the um, uh, Nova Biblioteca. Uh, and so there's, uh, <laughs> excuse me, about 18,000 references in there at the moment. Um, and it's also linked out to Pompeii and Pictures, which is this really wonderful site. And you'll hear a little bit more about it because we've uh, collaborated with them uh, and have 60,000 of their high resolution images uh, in our collections. Now, what's important about the work that we've done with the PBMP is that we've begun to be able to, and I kind of look at this slide and I think to apologize to, um, to Elton, who's seen it a couple of times now. Um, uh, but one of the things that's important about uh, this, this work is that on the one hand, we have this digital framework, but what that digital framework allows us to do is kind of re continue to reduce the resolution at which we can examine Pompeii. So here um, is Pompeii broken up into all of its individual buildings, its individual properties, um, as, as uh, Sebastian began to tell you. Um, we can't exactly call them buildings, but if we slip between buildings and properties, that's okay. Um, if we go a little bit further, we can drill down and actually represent every single one of the rooms in Pompeii. And we can go further than that and we can apply a individual a serial uh, name to every one of the walls in the city. 
So we've, we've reduced our resolution from a, an ancient city, 640 square thousand square meters uh, in area to the, it's broken down into its administrative regions, its city blocks, its individual buildings, its rooms, and now we can specify any specific wall inside the city that we're interested in. Um, just to get at a sense of the scale we were just talking about, um, just to get into the 13,000 rooms means that we have a lot of things to look at. Uh, there are 87,000 wall faces, just about 72,000 of those actually face into a room. Uh, there's obviously external walls and then walls into the, uh, the fortifications and other things that, that don't quite count here. And we have at least 100,000 images uh, that we're dealing with um, from several sources, uh, which I'll get to a little bit later. Why are we doing this? Um, we're doing this because Pompeii, and why do we call ourselves the Pompeii Artistic Landscape Project? We're doing this because Pompeii provides an opportunity to create, um, uh, or to rather to engage with not just an individual artwork here and there, and not just of high quality, but of exceptionally high quality in its original context and in the context of hundreds of thousands, potentially, if you would, depending on how detailed you are, but at least tens of thousands of other artworks that surround it. So it is full of detail, surrounded by massive context, and that gives us a whole landscape to explore. I'd like to add one other point at this point in, in a talk uh, about how, which is just to say that when you look at this, um, this cork model, um, so if when we talk about what have the models that preceded us uh, in, in representing the artworks of Pompeii, we have this one to 250 scale model made out of cork and hand painted that is now in the Naples Museum. Uh, and it tells us, and it reminds us that everything we're looking at in this image is something that came out of the Roman imagination. And, it, and although some of it is very standard and almost stock art, none of it is like when you go to a, a, a cheap hotel and they just have a photograph all hanging on the wall that is hanging in every one of their chain motels all across the world. Every one of these things is actually part of some Roman's imagination that they then added to the wall. And I find that to be kind of fascinating to think about the, the landscape in that way. So just to return us now to the PALP side, um, we'll take away our spatial and bibliographic information and we'll look at uh, Pompeii, the PPP and the PPM as we talk about them. These are massive uh, documentary sources. So the, the Pompeii uh, Petturi Pavimenti, uh, there are four volumes uh, that run over a thousand pages. And if you think, and that work is just simply text catalog. The uh, Pompeii Petturi Mosaici is 11 volumes each of them running about 1,100 pages. So just imagine trying to use these volumes uh, at one time. The, the, the size of the desk you would need uh, is, in, is incredible. To peek inside them, you get a chance to see what the information looks like that we have to deal with. So we have um, individual catalog entries that represent a single artwork on a single wall. So uh, over here, we have a description over on the left. Uh, and then it's translated with imagery into the right. And so the PPP on the left is the basis for the PPM, uh, although there is obviously more of uh, more that is not worthy of representation by a picture um, in the PPP that doesn't make its way to the PPM. I show these more than anything to this audience to begin to paint the picture of what the information architecture we're dealing with is. What is, the, what is the legacy structure of the information we want to use and how does that constrain us or free us um, either by providing some shackles of how it's actually constructed or not providing the kinds of guidelines we'd like to have and we have to invent them. Um, what have we done with this? Well, over the last year and a half, we have kind of gone slow to go fast. Um, we've built a, a few pieces of, um, uh, kind of internal infrastructure. And one of them is called the prequel. We call it the prequel because we built the other thing first, and then we realized, wow, this would be a good idea. Uh, and, and so what we have here is a way to load the images that we have available for us, um, either from the Pompeii Petrae and Mosaici, which we've extracted, or from the Pompeii and Pictures group. And what we're doing is using this simple tool to make associations between an individual wall. So you can see here what that says, ARC, under primary ARC, and then other walls that are in this um, uh, in this group. 
uh, oh, sorry, in this image. And then we make assertions if there's art in that picture uh, or if there's plaster in the picture to get a sense of where we need to do our, uh, to do our descriptions. And those descriptions, um, uh, Sarah, I'll actually stop, stop myself, I forgot to mention. The, the work that we do in the um, prequel gets passed to another place called the description workspace. And what the description workspace will do is gather all of that information about a particular wall, whether it's from the Pompeii pictures, pictures, it'll give you the PPP data, uh, it'll give you the PPM data, and we translate that to English for our student workforce. Uh, and then we ask them to work inside a Google spreadsheet in order to transform the information of <laughs> the visual information they're seeing on a wall uh, after a good deal of training, uh, to transform that into basically statements in a table. And I'm gonna leave it to Sebastian to say more about that. But our process is basically, is extract a bunch of information about Pompeii from the relevant and available sources, build, um, in, uh, build internal infra infrastructure and interfaces for a largely untrained student workforce, and then try to create um, uh, a set of data out of this that allows us to then transform that data into something that's more actionable, uh, which Sebastian will talk about. Sorry, I'm moving my computer here. The last thing I just want to say is why we would do this, and I know that Sebastian will come back to this in, in his portion of the, of the talk in just a minute, which is speculative research. So as I laid out when I tried to make you imagine what it would look like to lay out all of those volumes of the PPP and the PPM, um, how difficult it is to have an idea about something in the artwork at Pompeii and then ask yourself, well, how do I explore that? How do I find out if it's a viable option? So I usually use these three images just to say, hey, maybe I found out I was interested in Hercules. And so I start looking for him and his guys as the, as the little baby Hercules here. Uh, and then I look at him. Um, before I, um, um, Eric, thank you for that, that introduction. Again, um, um, fun to, fun to be here, wherever it is that we, that we are, fun to be with you. Um, uh, before I hit present on my, uh, screen, I did, um, I did talk a little bit about, um, trying to capture a moment. And that, that's, actually, that's actually really, really true. Um, so I am, just as, as, as a preview, we're gonna go into sort of, you know, the live part. Um, uh, I'm gonna try and run some Python. I'm gonna try and, uh, I don't think I'm actually gonna execute a Sparkle query, but I'm gonna trip through, click through to the query interface for a triple store. Um, uh, I don't, and, and, and I don't have a set of slides, so trying to capture, ca capture a moment, it is the case um, that because I'm showing things live, I assume that I am not quite gonna give enough context for everybody, so there's opportunities to say, hey, wait a second, Sebastian, stop. Like, Eric or Elton, you guys know me, do, I will not be insulted if you say stop and 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 say something. I do not the whole, know the I do not know all of you, um, and I can't even see everybody's here. I'm not so much assuming sort of like technical expertise. I am assuming both um you know pre-existing curiosity and a and a pre-existing dialogue about what linked open data is, and the idea that we are defining entities and that we are defining relationships between those. And that's the sort of core digital mode of translating a complex, you know, rich analog world that is Pompeii that could be as, 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 you know, intricately linked as one want, as one wants down to the individual brick. Where does one start thinking about those links being so rich that they're capturing the digital links or capturing the analog interaction between things? We're probably, we're, we are not there yet, but, but the idea that linked open data presents to us that as one of its goals to create a sufficiently linked, richly linked world so that one can sort of swim in it, but then to step back and to say, we need to turn that into specific computational actions that we're doing. Um, that's where I want to kind of express 
the moment of where we are, how we're taking that vision and turning it into very specific computational actions. Um, uh, allow me uh, just like uh, between a little bit of rhetoric and probably is actually true. I don't know that any one of those computational actions is particularly interesting. So I am somewhat relying and I can see in the crowd, hopefully some familiar faces. I am somewhat relying both on familiarity and a little bit of sort of like geekery that you think this is cool and that you're going to be able to say, okay, you know, I kind of see where they're going. So I am, I am asking for that affordance from you. Um, uh, but again, Eric and Elton will tell me when I'm really asking um, too much of my audience, not be, on, only because of, on, only because of sort of, you know, misreading the crowd, but I'm, can't, I can't even get any reaction. So, so um, I am going to dive in and click on present now and say my entire screen. And I'm a little bit like Eric. I don't know what you people are like, but like I, I have become comfortable with Zoom, and so then going back to Google Meet, where let's let's see what happens. It's gonna be, it's gonna, you know, like whatever. We how quickly I have fallen into Chrome wants to share the entire screen. I gotta click there now. Share. Am I being reminded why Zoom like was able to fill it? No, it's. I hopefully this is all working. I am I I'm presenting to everyone. Is that the case? Yep. And I think you see there were, it's possible that you can see yourselves. So I am, I am sliding down. I'm, I'm hopefully uh, this is becoming okay. Um, all right. How are we doing on time? 24 minutes, if I understand. But of course, we'd like to leave some time um, for conversation. Um, all right. I am going to spend some time on this window here, which is um, an IPython notebook. This is where, you know, hopefully some, the, the audience is vaguely familiar with the idea of, you know, we write small little programs that get, get computers to do things. Um, uh, but of course I can't see your faces anymore. So, so the four things that I'm gonna sort of try and um, quickly go over, but pausing at what I hope enough to give you an idea of what we're doing are, Yes, Eric noted that our main sort of data capture tool is um, the Google is Google Spreadsheets. Um, that is a deeply, deeply tactical decision because Eric, um, you know, he has a fantastic set of undergraduates working away, and we have found that that a, a way to get them to quickly up to speed is to say, you're working in a Google spreadsheet. And, and Eric can really talk more about the direct interaction with the undergraduates. I get to work with um, the output, but but Google spreadsheets as a, as, as a mechanism for sharing and it's backed up and you just, you know, get everybody in at the same time. Um, we're, we're embracing that convenience. Um, and uh, and um, um, that's, that's one of our main, that's one of our core uh, data stores. So what does that mean? So. Pompeii as linked open data context as implemented in a Google spreadsheet looks something like this. I am going to make my, the, the, um, whoops, I don't want to, didn't want to do that. Uh, I got I'm not sure what that is. Um, I don't know how big or small this is. Um, I hope, and, and somebody can sort of interrupt me that, that this is a, what you're seeing right here is a serialization that is a specific representation of something that we call a triple. I hope this is not the first time that the concept triple has come into, um, into this community. I'm sure that's not the case, but what am I saying? Pompeii, it's, it is a, a city. Pompeii has a, has a digital, Dublin core terms title. Um, it has a small description. It has, here I am saying Pompeii is equivalent to the Getty vocab, um, uh, URI uh, that you see right here. And I hope it's not so small and people are leaning in. Um, I wish uh, why I tried to make it bigger, but then uh, I'm not even gonna try and do that at, at 4.40 in the morning. Um, uh, the Pleiades URI, the Wikidata, uh, uh, sorry, URL, the Wikidata URL. Um, so again, create, uh, instantiating our version of Pompeii, a very abstract thing, linking it to other people's versions of Pompeii, going on and saying region one, this is this is where um, Eric was showing the different maps with increasing detail. Um, re there, there, there is a thing, region one. And by the way, it is spatially within Pompeii. And if I come, if I start scrolling down to the bottom, you just see a long list of three-part statements, triples, um, we're coming to, uh, 
region R9, I7, and insula. And by the way, it's within region nine and region nine will have been said to be within Pompeii. So this is our, this is a serialization of just a, a very simple um, spatial hierarchy for Pompeii. Reason, you know, straightforward to um, do. If I click on other things, here we have, you know, uh, and uh, there are the, this, this gets longer. I'm not going to scroll all the way down, but we're down to um, what we call the property. That is, you know, your Pompeian buildings, Pompeian addresses. Eric and I went back and forth. Where we, where, where region one, insular one, property three. So giving a nice discrete identifier for these entities and again uh spatially within they will say some somewhere here here this you know spatially within it's insula we're off to the races in terms of in terms of um uh entities that are are, are linked together okay so coming back to um here uh let me go let me let me um i decided that it would be too boring to take you in and say um, here's how I convert it. I can take the the collection of spreadsheets that we have, and actually I'll, I'll click through here now, keeping an eye on time. This is a description of one of uh, of a uh, wall at Pompeii, and this is the last slide where Eric said I will then hand over to Sebastian, um, and it's it's of a different form, but we can really read it as as saying. Um, a series of statements. There is a wall at Pompeii, and here's the here's the name for it. Uh, elsewhere, we were able to say that wall is part of a room, and that room is part of a property, and we're off to the, the, the further context that I've done. It has a fresco on it. That fresco has a has a middle zone. There's a center. Uh, and then we come over to the right here. I hope you can see my cursor. Again, opportunities for somebody to interrupt me. Um, and there's a crown. So that, that, that crown, the candelabra that you see here, the garland, all these things, all these, these small assertions about the presence of visual things on walls up Pompeii are linked back to where they are, which are linked back, you know, I'm from, from down here to, 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 to uh, uh, from, from vi this level of detail, this level of detail, back up to Pompeii, it's all linked together. Okay, um, briefly, Eric and I would be happy to the extent we have time for conversation to, to, to show you more of that. Um, I can take this agglomeration of Google spreadsheets and turn them into uh, uh, properly serialized uh, triples. And I do that and we take all that and this is a regular side effect as an indication of our goodwill as citizens on the internet who really want to share everything we're doing, probably overshare everything we're doing. Um, we put that um, on GitHub and I think I uploaded this within like the last five or six hours, view raw because it's too big. Um, and I have a couple of go, so it's going to load. So can I make this bigger? Yeah, that, okay. Yeah. Google spreadsheets didn't like, so, so this starts to be something that, um, uh, is so is not user friendly to show in a talk, but I hope it starts to give some of you, all of you a sense that, yeah, we are searching we are we are sharing good reusable um, data. If I come down and search for GeoJSON, you will see here. I am highlighting, and I really I do hope it's big enough to be readable. Um, region eight, Insula five. That is a PLOD Insula. It has a title. By the way, we have a GeoJSON representation of that, and we're just blasting that out across the internet. Hopefully, this one isn't isn't too too long. And yeah, by the way, this um, uh, insula is spatially within um, uh, region eight. Okay, pausing for thirty seconds. Some of you will have noted that we are using. Um, URNs, that's the sort of slightly out of style way of identi identifying things that acknowledge the existence of the internet, but tell you that this, in this information isn't immediately hosted 
anywhere that you can click through and find. That's because what you, to some extent, what you are seeing is PLOD, Pompeii Linked Open Data. That is a resource for anybody to grab. We happen to be part, I, the only people in the universe right now grabbing it and to integrate it into something that might be a nicer looking website and let, and, and, and let the world browse it. That is um, the reason we are doing that is because, yeah, the Getty gave us money to do the Pompeii Artistic Landscape Project, and that is going to manifest itself at what we hope is a nice and powerful website that lets people search art. But there is more at Pompeii than art, and so we want to build an open-ended architecture that is going to let us or anybody collect together linked open data about Pompeii, um, aggregate it, add stuff in, make your own interface. Perhaps you want to make the, uh, the, the basalt mill landscape, Pompeii basalt mill landscape project, and you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be able to use our, you know, our spatial infrastructure, our linked open data infrastructure, and make your own website, and that would be super cool. We hope you, we, we hope you link to ours, but we can't make you. Um, so it's out there for people to reuse. OK. Um, Coming back to what, uh, coming back here, all data on GitHub, it's all loaded into a triple store. I'm actually not gonna, for the interest of time, I'm not gonna click through on that. Um, uh, I'm coming to this section now, three queries that will be fundamental to Palp. That's what you're seeing right here. So let me, um, I'm sure I ran this all and it worked, but I'm just gonna do it again. Um, great. Coming down, this is stuff that you really don't care about. I'm connecting to the triple store. Like I said, uh, you don't care about that. Just running a quick query to see that there are 409,222 triples in a triple store right now. A tiny, tiny, small number, just what, what I made sure was working for, um, working for today. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my goal now is to introduce three queries to say that Eric and I and our colleague Alex Brennan, with whom we work closely, also at UMass, and the undergraduates that 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 Eric, like you know, keeps them moving forward, uh, are collecting information. Um, uh, I, we can turn it into good RDF, and then we can query that RDF using Sparkle. Do do not know you know where I am in terms of the the, the comfort of the crowd, but. Um, Think of a triple store as a database, and databases capture a moment in your organizing information, but capturing isn't enough. They need to let you query them, and that's what Sparkle does. So what do we have um, uh, going right? What do we have going on right here? Um, live uh, this. Again, I worry that I'm too small, and what's going to happen when I make? Yes, I can make that bigger. Um, space A is a room. It is in property one of Insula One in region one. Since we're Pom implied to be Pom implied to be Pompeii, that's that's the opening of the of, of the of world. Everything within Pompeii. Um, so what I am going to do? I'm going to run this query, and it is going to give us the spatial hierarchy of that um, uh, of of that of that entity so it's going to say what are you within you know we, um, uh, space a what are you within ah okay there you are there you are there you are you might say oh it's it's not just sniffing here it's querying it's querying um, the data data store and we can do that for you know um, uh, a, a range of things and I'll show you how that becomes um, slightly more interesting but um, for any entity, we can say, "Show me my, show me the the ancestors of of of, the, of, of that of, of that thing." Okay, great. Um, here, just slightly different ways of doing that. Some of this is example code for a colleague of mine uh, to 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 get her up to speed with um, doing things. Um, uh, also fundamental is our ability to take a spatial entity and to um, find out. Uh, the artwork that is with uh, the, the artwork that's um, within it. So um, I am going to. So if you look on the screen here, um, Pompeii. Um, 
And I'm going to do this at the level of the uh, insula, if I spell that correctly. Um, and so what we are seeing here is a list of all the things that undergraduates have um, uh, identified. So a generic fruit, a lar, a man, a musician, uh, a ribbon, uh, a tambourine, a thyrsus, a uh, urias, a canthus. Uh, there is currently just in in the in the data that we've collected together, and then I brought it brought to to work right now. Uh, there's one of these, and it's in uh, region one, insula nine. But I can change this and say I'd like to do this at the level of the um, property. Uh, great. And it's going to, dis it's disaggregating these things. And there's a Minad in R1 in region one, I9, P5. That's fantastic. Uh, um, or whatever. Uh, I hope that seems of interest. I can change. So here I'm doing it for all of Pompeii. I can change this to R1 and say, show me only the, that's actually not going to be that interesting. Um, show me um that's going to, I believe is going to be the same list. Eric will, will, will confirm that for me. Um, R1 at the level of property. Uh, here, go, let's go to I9. Insula, R1, I9 at the level of space. Um, and we are, again, um, uh, able to group according to the well-known spatial hierarchy of Pompeii and uh, to list at the various levels of detail of that to tell us that there's an amulet in region one, insula nine, property five, space eight, space eight, and by the way, there are two of them. So I'm hoping to show you that, that our ability to query um, the, the distribution of um, uh, aspects of the art of Pompeii as described uh, down to a fair amount of detail um, is real. And as we put in more information, these queries will become more interesting because they will put humans in the, the ability to say, uh, show me all the candelabra. And by the way, um, show me that they're in houses that have, um, you know, more than four rooms, that kind of thing, will all be able to be queried along these lines on the basis of that uh, that data that you saw in GitHub that anybody can um, uh, download and uh, make their own interface to. Um, all right, uh, so that's that's take a, take a, a space uh, and show me what's there, a, a, a spatial entity, and show me what's there. We can also sort of um, go from the other um, uh, the other perspective and say. Um, uh, and here I just left this here, bird um, broken down by region. So this will become all the birds. And I'm very happy, you know, we, we, it, it will be possible to say that a crow is a bird. And so if you search for bird, you'll get all the crows. If you get all the crows, if you search for crow, you'll only get, um, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll only get the birds that are said to be, to be crows. But I can, again, come down and, and break this up a little bit more. Um, property there. So um, now I'm list, right, listing it by property, finding all the birds, or I come down and list it by space. And you're seeing the birds listed by space, which is room. And then I can even go so far as to feature. I know that's going to um, work reasonably well. And those are, we're pulling out um, Eric's last spatial level of detail to say um, uh, there are birds on these walls. So, so you both, you can't, you can, I hope that it looks like we show that we can search for individual identified aspects of the art of Pompeii at various levels of spatial granularity and that um, uh, all we need, not all we need, but we need a nicer looking interface than a Python notebook. Okay, um, coming back up to the top, uh, the PLOD browser. Obviously, we're, we're, we're getting on in time. Um, let me just, if I could just very quickly take you to uh, 
this Friday I haven't used it in the last 20 minutes. So Heroku, which is a cloud-based um, platform for delivering uh, functionality across the, the, the internet. Um, uh, this is um, a pretty industrial by design looking website. If you probably can't see, I'm putting it in, uh, putting website in scare quotes as I sit here and talk to you. Um, uh, Fairly industrial looking um, uh, browser for those, uh, for triples. And I'm looking at time a little bit. I don't wanna go over too long. Hopefully do will slip in just a few minutes for conversation, but this should feel like you are looking at um, what, what may be familiar, if I've done anything, it's to it's to give you a sense that um, uh, these are just different views of the of of the same data. So this is a this is a representation of Pompeii serialized into HTML. Uh, again, the same types of things that I was looking, the exact same information that I was looking at when I showed you the spreadsheet, um, but with adding saying, um, by the way, region one points here and says region one says that it is spatially within this, and this is. Pompeii. Um, and then I'm showing you here the, uh, the, the artwork within Pompeii. I'm only showing you the first 30. Before I come back to that, let me just say, let me just point out that I can click here onto region one and it's telling me all the things that are um, uh, pointing here. And so region one, insula 14, point here, I'll go actually down to um, I9, that points here. And look how ugly this is. I'm just blasting the GeoJSON string. But of course, I will turn that and show that into the map. But like I, I talked at the very beginning, the moment of creation between vaporware and actual working website, um, hopefully it makes sense that we'll be able to turn this into a nice displayed map. Um, P1 is in here. And but you know, I can do things like it is an insula. Oh, let's click on insula. And you'll get a list of all the insula um, uh, that are here. Insula is a spatial item. Here they all are. And I can click through on, on any one of these. I'm going to go back out to um, Pompeii and in, in, in one minute, highlight that it is listing all the artworks here. Um, if I click down to region one, uh, it is listing all the artworks, uh, all, all, not all the artworks, all the motifs that are shown. Um, I probably need to change that a little bit. Um, uh, this is the, the segue where I now am gonna ask you to use your imagination and to, to say that, that PLOD is is a information resource and I've like strapped on just a quick and dirty interface for browsing it. But PALP will be, uh, one of the things that it will be, will be a website that will make this more visual. It will show you some, these images. Um, it will show a map. It will allow you to click through. We'll have an interface for, for constructing queries that say, show me all the garlands within, uh, again, you know, the type of query that I said before, show me all the garlands that are, that are within Insular One. And by the way, I'd like them to be uh, in, in houses that face this street. But all of that is specific interface work to turn this generic resource into a website that we can plausibly call the Pompeii Artistic Landscape Project because it not only looks nicer than this, but it creates ways of interacting with the information that do let people explore just that, the artistic landscape. Um, and with that, I will stop sharing. You're seeing my, uh, uh, I, hopefully I've stopped sharing and I come back to, I, I don't know where, I've of course now lost the meeting window. There I am. Um, uh, with, with two minutes to go, um, that either was way too fast or it caught some sense of, of, yeah, between Eric and me is a dialogue that there where we, where we intersect as Roman archeologists with computational interests and we are able to take high level ideas and turn them into specific computational, con you know, digital constructs and computational steps that will enable you and others to explore Pompeii. That's it.